All right, we're back again with more Marine Corps uniforms for uh, during World War II. Joe, take it away. What do we have here in front of us? All right, what we have here is, is the coveralls, uh, manufactured pre-war, pretty much from 1937 to 1940. Mm -hmm. um, they were issued to... Uh, um, uh, Marines being trained as airborne troops. This was their jump uniform for training, mm -hmm. stateside pre-war. By, by Pearl Harbor, they weren't uh, manufacturing them anymore. And they were issued also to tank, definitely the tank crewmen, mechanics of all types. They're on a collector's market in any shape. They're really rare. There's not a lot of them out there anymore. Mm -hmm. As you can see, it's got its fair share of stains and rips in it. Yeah. But that's going to be part of course, especially if it was issued to a tank Roman mechanic. You know, um, a rare, uh, and I think about them is, is the buttons. They do not have brass buttons. Brass buttons. It still has the U.S. Marine Corps button. Okay. But they're steel. Hmm. They're steel. So and, all the buttons there are all steel. Yes. Down the front. On the pockets and at the ankles. All the buttons are steel, not brass. Same, you know, sage green, HBT, you know, material. Mm -hmm. Ring core weave on it. Again, for combat situations in uh, in the Pacific, coveralls were not the way to go. You know, uh, reason first and foremost, hell of a way we need to go to the bathroom. Yeah. I mean, it's just that simple, you know. Uh, two opened ass pockets. And we're gonna get an in-depth look yep. of the uh, two front pockets. Uniform uh, later. A, a, a flapped front pocket with so it was also sewn in for you know for, for a pen. Mm -hmm. And it also had button pockets to get to your pants underneath. Okay. So it had external po hand pockets and then a button pocket to get into your. You know, they closed below it, but they were doing yeah. coveralls. They were coveralls. And, um, you know, being though it issues a tank crewman, I have a tanker's helmet. And this particular helmet was issued to a member of the 1st Tank Battalion, Divisional Special Troop, 1st Marine Division, just before Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. um, made by Spaulding, as we know them from the baseball glove company, because the interior of these is all leather. Yeah. And, uh, there were millions of these helmets made, but this particular one is pretty cool because it actually has the Marine Corps markings on the back for the, for the actual tank battalion. So first tank battalion, what's DT, uh, DST? Divisional Special Troops. And it was never, you remember the 1st Marine Division. Oh, wow. Yes. Those are the coveralls. All right, let's take an in-depth, actually a closer look of the coveralls and the helmet. Right, an in-depth look of the coveralls. Steel buttons instead of brass. United States Marine Corps. Something down there. Now you said something about the pockets on the side or the buttons right, on the it side? It had its own pocket, but it also had a basically a button slit that would allow you to get to your pants inside. Oh, okay. You know, coveralls, you simply put them over your clothing. Okay. Hmm, interesting. As you can see, it's pretty dirty. A lot of brush stains on it. Got the twill. In depth 12, yep. All right, and the helmet. It has the goggles, it has the, the, the ear pieces for the radio belt in them, and the ear flaps. This is where you plug it in. And there's the air pieces. And there's, the, and there's the markings. Okay. 
let's uh, can you can we take a look inside? Yeah. Oh, I was wrong. Wrong baseball glove company. Rawlings, not Spalding. Rawlings. I knew it was one of the other baseball glove companies. It's nice leather, too. Mm hmm. It's still nice and soft. It's a good shape, this helmet. I wonder if these um, earphones still work. <laughs> the wires are pretty frayed, but they might. The magnets are still good and they might. Hmm. Nice.